Hi, my name is Bruce Canner. I'm the Mayor Pro Tem of Lathrop Village. Today I'd like to do about a 15 minute public service announcement related to up the upcoming road project and infrastructure improvements that you'll see uh, from now until uh, the late fall. This will be the first of many public service announcements over the next three years of construction. The idea is to provide frequent announcements to residents and businesses so that you'll know exactly what to expect both in the near and the long term. First, I want to start off by thanking residents. I want to thank them for, them for their support, their patience, and their understanding. There, there's never really a good time for these kinds of multi-year uh, projects, uh, nor does anyone really get excited about having to pay for them. However, uh, these projects are decades overdue and quite necessary to maintain our roads and our infrastructure to the standards that we all expect and to maintain our property values in our community. You may have already seen work in progress. Uh, we've already started to do some initial tasks of the projects. Um, but I wanted to brief you on what to expect in the near term. Um, so let's begin by talking about what we're going to be doing with, with respect to the roads. Over the next three years, uh, we'll be paving at least seven years of residential roadway with a little over two miles this summer. Uh, the following roads are going to be repaved uh, this summer. And this first group that I'm going to mention are, are roads that will undergo what's called resurfacing. This is where we cold mill off the top three inch layer of asphalt and replace it with three and a half inches of new asphalt. So the roads that are undergoing resurfacing are a villa, a villa uh, from Lather Boulevard to the city border, Bungalow from Rainbow Drive to Santa Barbara, Glenwood from Lather Boulevard to East Golden Gate, Sunnybrook from Rackham to Red River, Sunset from Wiltshire to Bloomfield, and Santa Barbara from Bungalow to San Jose. The second group of roads that I'm going to mention here are roads that will undergo reconstruction and rehabilitation. Without getting into the, the, the details, uh, these, these processes are much more intensive and they're much bigger projects uh, relative to uh, simple resurfacing that I mentioned a second ago. Um, the roads that are undergoing reconstruction or rehabilitation are Alhambra from Santa Barbara to Sunset, Glenwood from Red River to Santa Barbara, San Jose from Rackham to Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara itself from, from San Jose all the way to the North End, and then Wiltshire from Santa Barbara to Bloomfield. Now, construction projects will begin on May 3rd. Um, different streets will be repaved at different times throughout the spring, summer, and fall. Uh, however, all of the streets are going to experience some degree of, of disruption. Streets that are undergoing the less intensive process of resurfacing um, will not see complete closures, but residents will not be allowed to use the streets from 7 a.m. in the morning to 7 p.m. in the evening. So basically, the, the daytime hours are, are off limits, but residents can use the streets in the evening. Um, streets that undergo uh, the reconstruction or rehabilitation uh, will experience complete closures. In fact, those, they'll, they'll be closures for two to three weeks, and those will be consecutive weeks. Um, so obviously, uh, that kind of closure is going to create some issues. So let me talk a little bit about those issues and how we plan to mitigate them. Uh, the first issue I want to talk about is parking. Um, residents, first off, will be notif notified at least three days in advance as to when their streets will, will undergo the complete closure. Uh, and when your street is closed, residents are asked to park on the next street over in either direction. Um, we're also asking residents uh, to be accommodating and cooperate and allow residents to cut through where possible uh, their yard so that they can get to their homes easier without having to walk all the way around. Uh, several years ago when we did this, the residents were great and allowed uh, other residents to cut through their lawns. So we're hoping that people uh, will cooperate again uh, with this project. Um, also, please note that the police will not be ticketing cars overnight uh, on those, those streets due to the extra volume of cars. Uh, and in fact, we'll actually be doing extra patrols because we'll have so many extra cars on the streets uh, in order to keep them secure and safe. Uh, finally, uh, because uh, we're going to have large construction vehicles regularly moving up and down our main thoroughfares of Santa Barbara and Bloomfield, we ask that you don't park on those streets. So please don't park on Santa Barbara or Bloomfield. Uh, another issue that we're going to have is garbage, because garbage trucks won't be able to access the streets. So uh, for those streets that undergo closure, uh, we ask you to hold your garbage for uh, that, that closure period. Or alternatively, if you're willing and able, you can take it down to the end of the street to a designated area, which, where we'll have signs posted 
um, where you can put your garbage uh, and then the refuse collectors will, will pick it up uh, at that designated spot. Also, uh, for these uh, streets that are closed during that two to three week period, there will be no branch shipping services available. Um, mail, the postal service, that's gonna be another issue because the, again, the mail trucks won't be able to get down the street so they will not deliver mail. So we ask that you go to the post office and either arrange for your mail to be forwarded somewhere else or to have them hold, the, hold your mail uh, during the closure. Uh, we also know that some people are going to experience special challenges. So we ask anyone who's elderly, mobility challenged, uh, or needs special assistance to arrange help in ahead, of, ahead of time with your families, your coworkers, uh, your neighbors, or your friends. Um, if you, however, if you, if you do have a special need and you've exhausted all of your contacts, please contact the city, dial the main number, and dial extension 223. Again, that's 223. Uh, which is Susie Steck's extension, and she will do whatever she can to help uh, mitigate the particular issue that you're experiencing. Um, with respect to the actual construction itself, uh, many of you will see uh, people jet cleaning or workers jet cleaning your culverts, which is the tube that goes underneath your driveway to carry water from one side to the other. Um, this is part of the, the restoration of the ditch system. Also, with respect to ditches, uh, some of the ditches will, will have some light regrading and some will also have some work done on the catch basins and, and the drains. Um, any landscape or sprinkler damage that does occur as part of this work uh, will be uh, repaired by the city at no cost to the, to the resident. Uh, we also ask that residents who have irrigation systems flag their sprinkler heads so that when they are doing any type of regrading or, or work on the ditches, they can avoid uh, damaging them in the first place. Uh, lastly, um, the driveway approaches uh, of most of the residents, the first three feet of them will get cut out during the repaving process. Um, once the roads are repaved, that three foot cutout will also be repaved and it'll be repaved with the, the, the original material. So if you have a concrete driveway approach, they'll repave it with concrete. If it's asphalt, they'll repave it with asphalt. So that's everything on the road with respect to the roads. Um, so we'll, we'll see a lot of that work this summer. Uh, but we do have a lot of other projects going on. Uh, another one, uh, and I'm, I'll talk about all of them, but another one that we have uh, is, is our sidewalk improvement program. Uh, the sidewalk pr improvement program has already started. Uh, this summer, we're working on the Southfield Business Corridor and the residential areas south of 696. In the summer of 2022, we'll move on and the focus will be the northeast quadrant of the city, followed by the northwest quadrant of the city in the summer of 2023. Um, you may have already seen officials out and about uh, marking defective sidewalk blocks with spray paint. Um, and so what will happen next is sometime in mid-May, residents who have those uh, defective sidewalk blocks will begin receiving letters from the city, uh, which residents will need to respond to to inform the city as to whether or not they are going to fix the sidewalk themselves or with their own contractor, or whether or not they'll take advantage of the volume discount that the city is going to secure with its contractor and have the city do the work. If you do have the city do the work, uh, the city will direct bill you the, the cost of the work, which again, you'll be notified ahead of time in the letter. Um, and you'll have the ability to either pay it back uh, in full in one lump sum, or you also will have the option to split the payment over two years. Our fire hydrants and water main gate valves also have a project uh, this summer. Uh, most of our fire hydrants uh, were actually installed in the 1920s and have long uh, outlived their useful life. Um, you may have noticed our DPW has already started to uh, replace uh, the fire hydrants and uh, you'll see this summer we're going to replace or refurbish 45 fire hydrants and install 11 fire hydrants uh, in new locations. Similarly, most of our gate valves are in the same situation. Most were installed in the 20s. Um, they've definitely outlived their lifespan um, and we've already started to replace or refurbish them. Uh, we're gonna do 67 of those this summer uh, and install eight in, in new locations. Um, for those of you that don't know what a, a gate valve is, uh, it's basically a valve that's used to uh, shut off a section of water main when we need to do water main repairs or do water work uh, associated with that line. Um, the problem we have now is, is most of them don't work, uh, which causes major headaches and, and significant expense anytime we have a, a water project that we need to do. Um, residents will usually be notified before any water shutoff associated with any of this work. However, due to the nature of the work, um, we do expect that there will be a few unscheduled 
uh, water shutoffs. Typically those will be brief, but we do ask your uh, patience when this, when this occurs. Um, lastly, with respect to, you know, actually with respect to all of the, the water improvements that we'll be doing, um, some of these, these types of projects tend to stir up the sediment that's in the water main lines, which can then end up in your, in your cold water faucet. So if you, if you do see sediment or browning of your water, um, it's not dangerous and it's very easy to, to remedy. All you really need to do is go to the lowest cold water tap in your home, which is typically in your basement, and run the water for five to 10 minutes. Uh, that should clear out the line and uh, get rid of any sediment that, that, you, that you have. As far as actual water main projects go, we do have two major projects this summer. Um, the water line on, uh, will, uh, on San Rosa between Southfield Road and Lathrop Boulevard will be completely replaced, as will the water line on Wiltshire uh, between Southfield Road and Lathrop Boulevard. Uh, after those water main projects are complete, uh, those two roads will be uh, repaved, and that repaving will happen either later in the fall or next summer, in the, uh, i.e. the summer of 2022. Uh, another water-related project that we have going on is, is water line uh, material identification. So one of the state's unfunded mandates that they placed upon the city is that we're required to visually inspect uh, all the stop boxes in front of homes to see whether or not the pipes that lead into the stop box and go out of the stop box are made of lead or galvanized steel. So the stop box for most homes is located in the front yard, uh, just adjacent to the sidewalk. But in order to get to it, uh, excavation is required. So a crew is gonna actually have to dig down five feet deep so that they can visually inspect the, the, the stop box. And because most of the stop boxes are very, very old, um, they will also be replaced um, during this, this visual inspection process. Uh, also, uh, as I said before, any landscape or sidewalk damage that, that occurs uh, during the excavation uh, will be repaired at no cost to the resident. Um, if lead or galvanized steel is found during this visual inspection, um, your water line will be replaced by the city at no cost to the resident. Um, while this visual uh, identification process is taking place, uh, we don't expect that there will be any water disruption um, while that work is completed. Now, the, the state actually initially mandated that all homes, all 1,700 homes in Lathrop had to be uh, visually inspected, but as recently as a couple weeks ago, they changed their tactic and now based on the um, formula that, that needs to be used or that, that's used, we, we need to inspect only 350 lines. Uh, so uh, there's a random process that is used to identify the 350 homes. We've already run through that random process and those 350 residents who were selected uh, will be receiving letters soon uh, informing them of the process and when that will be done. The last item that I want to mention is water line self-identification, and I can't underscore how important this particular uh, project is because we need your help. We need the help of residents in doing this. Um, the state also requires that the city identify the water line material where it comes into your house and attaches to the water meter. Um, this identification is required in every home and business uh, within, within the city. So to avoid having to have somebody enter your home, especially now during a global pandemic, we're employing a self-identification process which requires no technical knowledge. Um, it's very easy to do, and it literally takes less than three minutes to do. I did it myself. It only took me a couple minutes to do it. Um, so to find instructions on how to, how to do this uh, self-identification process, go to our city website on the front page uh, in the news section, and you may have to scroll to the right or left because it moves sometime. But in that news section, there will be a link to the very easy instructions that you can follow and do this process in, in two to three minutes. So through this process, we've already identified uh, about 21 lead service lines that we're going to replace this summer, again, at, at no cost to the resident. Um, so we've, we've had about 200 people do this process so far, um, but we need all 1,700 homes to do it. So. Um, Again, we don't want to come in your house during a pandemic, and it's a large expense for the city to hire somebody uh, to come out and do this work um, when it's something that residents can do, like I said, in, in two to three minutes. So we really ask your cooperation uh, in, in identifying uh, the material of your water line. So just to conclude here, um, our primary goal with these public service announcements is really to keep you informed and let you know what to expect because we have a lot of work that's happening in the next, next three years. So we'll be doing a lot of these. 
Um, in addition, to help keep you informed, we've also created an infrastructure web page. So to access that page, you can go to the main, main page of the city website, up at the top where it says residents, click on residents, and then scroll down and you'll see infrastructure projects, and that'll take you right to the infrastructure uh, project page, where you'll see a lot more information about all the projects I've talked about, as well as some of the projects I haven't talked about. Um, so it's a really great way to keep yourself informed. Um, also, it may be there already, if not, it will be there soon. We'll also have an interactive map where you can click on your home or anyone's home within the city and you can see exactly what projects are scheduled for that area and when those projects are going to take place. So this should really be an aid to you uh, in order to, to kind of plan your life uh, around uh, these, these, these projects over the next three years. So if you have any questions or concerns or want to talk about this or learn more, um, I'm always willing to talk about it, so um, feel free to email me uh, at bcantor at lathropvillage.org. That's bcantor at lathropvillage.org, and it's B-K-A-N is in Nancy, T is in Tom, O-R. So bcantor at AOL, I'm sorry, at lathropvillage.org. Uh, um, or you can call the city's main number and dial my extension, which is 286, again, 286, and you can leave me a message, and I'll get back to you. So. There's a lot of work that's going to be done, as I said, this summer and, and the two following summers. Um, it's very exciting. A lot of this stuff is, is long overdue, um, but these are improvements that, that we need to make, um, and I think things are going to be great. So uh, stay safe, and uh, until our next uh, PSA, uh, be good.